I just have a question about my homework. You said how many characters do I have? Three, three or four. I'll, three. I left it up to you. Okay. Three, if you really want to focus on quality. Four, if you want to focus on both quality and quantity. All right. Some people I was very explicit said they only could do four or only could do three. You have the option. All right. Yeah, this brush right here I've been falling in love with. It's like a combination of like a hard brush and a soft brush. But it it helps like imply a lot of information too, which is super fascinating. Well, I, I have a question. <laughs> yeah, what's up? And, uh, I have, uh, hold on. Um, how can I create like original and really cool ideas based oh, on, okay. on, uh, well, it's because, uh, I heard some videos or people who are really professional on, on digital painting or mm -hmm. design, they always say they find reference and keep, uh, keep on the, um, on the real stuff, like watch the real world and get inspired with that mm -hmm. and sometimes i have problems with that i usually yeah i have reference from the real real world but every time i said it's kind of boring so i go to an artist and i always kind of look like different artists how they made this character like this and then i got inspired and then i try to do a cool idea similar than the the kid the, the artist so mm -hmm. how can i I don't know how can I make really really cool ideas for yeah okay. so so this is actually I have a pretty fundamental solution to this problem that I think is helpful so um and actually now that I'm thinking about this out loud it might be a solution to my gaming problem uh, but I, anyway I'll I'll get into that in just a second no actually I won't get into that I'm done talking about my game um but I'll talk about like what I mean about this fundamental solution, okay? So the solution ultimately, you know, what some people who can arc articulate this either very well or they don't know how to articulate it at all. Um, but ultimately what a lot of these people are getting at, which is close to the truth, is that when they're saying like you should reference and all that good stuff, um, what that really means is that you got to like remix, you know, you got to like take ideas that are great uh, or interesting and remix it. What I think makes humans truly unique uh, versus most of the animal kingdom, because we are animals and we're not any better than any other animal, right? Like who cares? We can make smartphones like koalas live their whole life living in a tree you know completely content you know what I mean? like, and we're out here like blowing each other up <laughs> you know what i mean and um and potentially sabotaging ourselves in the long long term with climate change right but it's it is there is something i do think is great about us which is the creativity right like that in that in itself is a very a very powerful tool that our species has it's just maybe it's gotten a little out of control lately yeah. lately as in the last hundred years you know a few hundred years but it's a great thing man it's like a super cool thing and then i think a lot of us were built with it in fact the majority of us are built to be creative okay it's just been beaten out of us ironically as well through industry right but what made us creative as children was that we didn't really have this cookie cutter way of thinking how of how things fit in the world. Does this make sense? Like we didn't like, there was no like uh, rules, like hard rules for a lot of stuff, you know? And that play, that creativity, that like, that uh, uh, mixing and matching freely, no criticism, right, as children, was truly endearing 
And when as we get older, that gets that shit gets beaten out of us. And I'm my I'm working my ass off trying to beat that shit back into us. <laughs> okay. And so now I'm gonna like fundamentally answer you this question. So if you are trying to be more creative, right? You're trying to like come up with better ideas, more cooler ideas, then you need to have more ideas that are just cool or interesting or just tidbits of facts floating in your brain and your subconscious at all times to be able to harness this power that we have innately as humans, okay? So remember how I was talking about um, gravity waves, right? And creating like space-time ripples. Remember how I was talking about that earlier? Yeah. What if I designed a character where well, that's all their power was, is to manipulate space and time right? What does that look like? You know? And I start thinking of creatures that actually, you know, create ripples in real life. Okay. So like, you know, maybe sea creatures of some sort. There's like the mantis shrimp that does some fucking crazy stuff. You know about the mantis shrimp? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But you see how like I'm combining stuff in my Mm -hmm. mind and then I'm going to like now manufacture that. Right. And then it's like, okay, what would that look like if I did that in the style of Brom, one of my favorite painters? You know, do you see how like this is how you start to create something fresh? Mm-hmm. You know, but if you're just like I'm gonna paint a medieval character, like Brom paints medieval characters, you're not really adding anything new. He's already kind of nailed that. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm gonna make a a robot that's like the Tally's robots. He's kind of already done that, you know, mm-hmm. like Vitaly Bogorov, like he's like the robot guy, you know. So when I was designing mechs, I wasn't just looking at robots. I was like looking at toasters, you know, I was like, fucking this toaster done by this production designer or this product designer is kind of badass, dude, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I know people aren't looking at toasters, dude. They're always looking at the most literal version of everything. I'm going to draw robots. I have to only look at robots. Do you see the, the, the problem there, right? You're, you're not allowing yourself access to this natural ability that we have, which is once you give the brain enough of this kind of visual and visceral information just floating around in it, you know, it'll, it'll come up with stuff on its own, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how you kind of get around to that. You know what I mean? Like, I remember, um, I remember hearing about this, this, I think, I don't know. I think I might've talked to you guys about this. Um, I remember hearing about this thing about Einstein reading about the science fiction book. And how in the science fiction book, the guy was talking about if you can go as anywhere in space instantly, you can time travel, or basically you can see things at a certain point in time, because that's how light works, right? Light is not mm-hmm. instantaneous, it takes time. But obviously, the closer you are to the light source, the more instantaneous it feels, you know? It's like uh, the surface of the earth is appears flat, but that's because we are like tiny in comparison, you know? <clears throat> it's the scale that makes it feel fat, uh, not fat, it's flat, right? Mm-hmm. It's the scale of it, it's just enormous. So we just don't feel how, how round the curvature of the earth is. You can't see it, you know? Mm-hmm. But like he was talking about like in the science fiction novel, it's the same concept as like, if you could just travel instantaneously anywhere in time, like if I was to go 5,000 light years away from the earth and I was able to look at the light at that moment coming from the earth in crystal clear clarity, I could see the earth like 5,000 years ago, you know? And that's what made Einstein think that's pretty badass that everything's relative. Relativity. Relativity. What if the universe... It's just all about that, (laughs) you know? He's like, that. that, there's some merits to that because he did like thought experiments of like, yeah, if I'm in a 
train that's going, you know, X miles an hour. And I'm on the outside of the train watching somebody going or somebody else is on the outside watching me go. To me, the world feels like it's sitting still, but to them, they see me moving away, right? And he's like, that's like a thing. What if that's, what would that look like at a larger universal scale, you know? See, so even in the scientific method, like he did that. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't just like, I'm just gonna randomly come up with an idea and it hopefully is like a thing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like that can happen, but it's like, that is not a reliable strategy. Right. Usually innovation is piggybacked off of previous innovation that was piggybacked off of previous innovation. You know, like the computer didn't just come out of nowhere. Right. It was it was built off of the last like the backs of, and on the shoulders of giants, you know. And artistic creativity is the same stra uh, has the same strategy. OK. Like when I when I think about that sci fi novel. And I'm like, okay, what if I designed a character around this premise that they they don't just teleport through space, they teleport through space and time. So it's essentially time traveling, but in the in the scope of like, I'm not just time traveling to an instance uh, in time, like I have, I basically can manipulate time and space, right? And so I can, you know, they, they did this a little bit in uh, the Avengers, which is super cool, which is like, you know, when uh, Ant-Man was first testing, yeah, it's like, no, time is being pushed through him, not him going through time. Like that, that type of concept is super cool, you know? And I was like, what if I had made like a character around that? What does that look like? you know mm -hmm. and i remember when i was coming up with characters for my sci-fi project that i built a long time ago my buddy and one of the concepts that we came up with was like you know if everyone's like let's think of the world of the future less dystopian like because everyone always thinks of it super dystopian <laughs> you know what i mean like we're all fucked I was like, what if we didn't do that? What if we designed it around, like, uh, not like that, you know, where everything is not fucked? And what is what if, what is our universe going to look like if we just all got our shit together? You know? And we mm -hmm. came up with some cool novel ideas, in my opinion. But it's like, okay, so what is a thing that we would probably, like, what is a thing that you don't think we would ever get rid of, but we did? Because that's the fucking future. And we would just talk about it. Like, what about eating? Like, we really need to eat, right? <laughs> like, that's the thing. It's like, but what if we got rid of that? But not in like a way that's like, there we're robots now, right? No, like we found a way to like get rid of eating. Like you're still a human, but you don't have to eat anymore. And it's like, well, why do we eat, right? We well, have to get that because we try to get energy. Okay, well, what, what other ways can you get energy? It's like, shit, like, uh, plants get their energy from the sun we eat the plants one way or another right whether we get it from the plants directly or we get it from the animals who eat the plants right so why don't we just circumvent all of that and just make something that creates photosynthesis the way that plants do and like they basically creates sugars and minerals and proteins just from sunlight you know and i was like yeah what if you can get like solar panel implants on your skin like, what does a character look like if they had that? You know? Uh, we would have, like, concepts like that. Like, I remember another one that I really loved we came up with, which was um, people would get, uh, like, just like we would have th uh, thrill seekers who would, like, go bungee jumping and, uh, you know, skydiving. Like, we would have uh, gravity uh, chasers. So basically what they would do is go to planets like Jupiter that have like real dense gravity and they'll just try to get close to the, like try to get close to the surface of Jupiter, right? As humanly possible and just basically feel themselves getting ripped apart just before they pull themselves back out, you know? And one of our characters in our story, like that's all they live for. And the fact they got 
um, gravity sickness, meaning that like whenever people would go to the space stations where there was stable get gravity, this person was so used to zero G and just extreme versions of gravity that they were like regular good old fashioned earth type gravity made them sick, you know? So they would always like have meetings like this, this group of characters, but this one character, she was always outside because she couldn't bear being inside. She'll get fucking sick. Uh, you know, and talking about like, that's, that's super rad, you know, mm -hmm. but going to that point of when you talked about like how people would ask or say, you should look at real life. You should look at real life. There's truth to that. Right. But like, mm -hmm. I'm telling you from a different perspective is it's not so much that, yeah, just look at real life. Duh, dummy. It's like, look at everything, including real life and real life. Just sometimes just has some of the more interesting things it does. You just gotta like, look for it. Right. There's certain like sea creatures and uh, animals that exist on our planet that are they themselves feel like constant dart. I sh I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's just some creatures you're just like I can't even believe this is a real animal, <laughs> right? Yeah. And that's the kind of stuff that you should be looking at. But if you're looking at like a squirrel, um, there could be something there, right? But I can see also why that would not be as helpful as like looking at um the shrimp the like the mantis shrimp, mantis shrimp this, yeah. like clearly like a bizarre creature you know yeah um or looking at really exotic locations on our planet you know like like that's the stuff that you should probably do when it talks about real life and if you really want to find some really fascinating stuff you just gotta listen to like the like i was just talking earlier about like astrophysicists and like you should listen to the experts who are like on the frontier of like biology uh space travel and science you know like these motherfuckers are like on a whole other <laughs> level of like <laughs> seeing the world like that us human mortals are still like trying to figure out if i can get like a, ca a cafe latte with soy milk or almond milk you know what i mean mm -hmm. these guys are just like because this guy brian green this is the guy i was listening to he's talking about quantum computing he's just like it's so fucking crazy that you know, even with the quantum computing, we're discovering how black holes work because it's so crazy. And um, and he said, but not just black holes, but like everything, <laughs> you know. And he mm -hmm. he said something that thing in that podcast with Joe Rogan that I have agreed with for many years, or I believe to be true. And this is something that I learned from being a concept artist: is that humans are all about pattern recognition, and when when people started getting weirded out by like ai that could like paint and draw and stuff and people are like well eventually like you can't really like replace humans you know like in terms of creative arts as like why couldn't it it's all patterns i'm just a series of patterns right mm -hmm. and you could absolutely simulate that i'm almost positive you can <laughs> okay Mm -hmm. it's like seems very scary to think that like i could be replaced by a robot but i'm just saying like like i built my whole platform of education teaching people to follow a cer certain set of patterns to be get to that level of uh high quality art right mm -hmm. the less you think about it as like like artsy fartsy like some sort of weird kind of talent-based skill like you either have it or you don't the more you think of it as like no if i put these series of systems in place to learn i will get there uh, the human brain is really good at this you know robots are not yet absolutely though there is going to be an off day where you can just say i want to see a sci-fi movie you know that engages in time travel you just type that in into like movie ser or movie maker dot io right mm -hmm. and it'll take like maybe like you know five minutes and then it makes a two-hour movie with made-up actors made-up script made up like visual effects like nothing was actually created by anybody it was this ai just took an agglomeration of like all the stuff that has ever existed looked at the pattern of great sci-fi movies look at all the stuff that it would take to make that and it would actually be great you know Right now, it's fucking weird. Like, there's some versions of this that exist currently, and it's real weird. I'm sure you've seen, like, the people who will 
make a AI make a script and it's just super funny. <laughs> it's like <laughs> hilarious. That's because it's still in its infancy, right? We're we're dealing with like Nokia nine thousand version of smartphones, you know. But when it comes to AI, but that shit is coming around. Uh, I just got a software. Um, let's see if I can. Yeah. Oh man, I didn't type it all the way. No. Yeah. Have you guys seen this? Well, I was actually checking this out like a month ago. This thing's pretty cool. So basically, holy shit! Yeah, basically, you can take any f- footage and you paint a series of keyframes. Not all of them, but like you know, several keyframes, and it will essentially turn it into a. Uh, and it looks like it's hand painted. Yeah, and one artist I follow. <laughs> This, like share something on his instagram and i was like what the fuck and i couldn't figure out what he did and then i read his description and then i looked into it myself and i saw that this is what they did there's a movie that uh, i think the story of van gogh they oh, did yeah. it like that i think no i think that one was done legitimately i think what they did was they had, yeah they had a bunch of artists who paint really well basically paint a frame of that movie damn but it was like lots of artists and lots of paintings okay not like that ai technology where i can do it by myself in probably two hours (laughs) which is fucking crazy yeah i was able to spin one up and i think uh like a day day and a half yeah i'm gonna try it when I have a little bit more time on my hands. It's going to change the game, dude. Anyway. Any sway. Any other questions? Hopefully that answered your, your question. Sure, man. Thank you very much. I believe in you guys. You guys have questions? I got answers. At least I think I have answers. Oh, Any somebody. beginner's business tips? Beginner business tips. Yeah. Um, can you be more specific on what you mean by that? And then I'll, I have some ideas what I can give, but I'm curious. One thing is, um. I guess trying to get past the hassle of just uh, posting mostly on social media because technically you're your own marketing team first. And then, yeah, we'll just start that one. Okay. So, all right. The, the way that I like to think about if you're going to, let's say, start your own business of any sort, um, you got to have customers right so marketing is a is a, a effective tool not because of some sort of weird superficial reason that people might attach to it it's because you are finding customers that's what it should be used for effectively like avoid like the the large larger tier marketing firms you know that seem a lot more panderish and more like roll your eyes when you see some of their marketing campaigns right uh, if you think of more of like a mom and pop shop style, that's how I, I like to drive my my way through business. It's like, okay, I'm just looking for people who like what I have to sell. Does that make sense? So um, when it came to like building my business, uh, when it came to education, when I decided to do it, the reason was because I knew that there were many people who wanted to know how I made art right just like many of you guys had that feeling about a lot of your favorite artists not just me right um and i knew that there was enough of those people that i could build a viable business around even before like i knew that i was doing a good job of marketing right so i'm gonna kind of backwards engineer the logic that i realized that had happened but 
what ultimately I discovered was that like, um, that not only was I right about that, that I, I didn't realize that I was building that market indirectly. And I, when I realized that is when I tried to do other things and nobody really cared about it. And you know what I mean? And so when I was building my audience just through my art, I was building an audience of other artists typically, right? Some beginner, some advanced, some intermediate, but artists, that's my audience. I make artwork that's appealing to not just regular folk, but also majority of just artists. Artists like this type of stuff, especially like this painting right here. I can tell that this will probably do well because it feels so gestural, feels effortless, you know? And my audience, specifically the art audience is gonna be like vibing off of it quite a bit, you know? So then if I were to say, okay, I'm gonna make a tutorial saying how I did this, that's gonna sell very well because I have audience that would not only are impressed by, let's say a painting that I may have done, but they also are like, like, oh, this guy's gonna, teach me how to do it shit okay i want to learn that and so when i built that like my first gun roads for instance because i thought like there's a there's a market here that i can fill because there's like the alternative to me is 30 or 50 or 60 dollar tutorials online right and so i changed the i changed my strategy to be like i'm going to be the itunes model but with paintings tutorials right so keep my tutorials sweet, keep them personal, personal. Don't try to get too weird with it, you know? Just be myself and just teach people as if I was sitting right next to them, you know? Because I think I do that well. And that shit blew up. And so all of that was working for me. And, uh, and so then when I am building this game, right? I'm realizing that I need to build an audience around my game development. So this first game and maybe the next seven games I make will only build that audience. And ultimately when I build a large enough audience, uh, I could probably make and sell games to my audience. Does this all make sense to you? But it's a, it's a game of building that audience. And for beginner business owners, like you gotta have a real good pulse on who you're selling to how to find those people and then build it, begin building that audience. Uh, when I promote on Instagram, right? Uh, my classes, uh, it does well, but not as well as, as if I email people that directly follow me on my email list. You know what I mean? Because those people literally came to learn from me, right? And so Instagram is less of that. It's like majority of Instagram or not the majority, but a good amount of Instagram is people that just like my artwork. So they're not necessarily artists. They're just people that are art enthusiasts, you know, but then people on, um, what you call it? Art station. When I promote anything through there or through Gumroad directly, shit sells, dude. You know, does this make sense? And I find that like, well, let me give you a great example of people who do not understand this. I have friends who um, will message me and they'll have like a, like a book that they've written and they're like, hey, can you promote this to your audience? You know, like a book, like a novel. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. And they're, they're like, why not, man? Like, like you have like, hundreds of thousands of people there like it would help me out a lot and i told i remember i had one friend that i did this years ago with, and i said I, i'm gonna tell you right now you're not gonna get like a single sale and if you do i'll be surprised you know from me specifically you know and he was just like i don't understand why like why, why you're so negative it's like i'm not i'm being realistic my audience is not here because they like to read my books that i put out i don't put out books you know, I'm sure there's some people that like to read books, but my audience, like you're not, they're not that kind of people, you know, they might be, some of them might, but I just doubt that this is going to do well. You need, like, even with my large audience, 
I only have like a 5%, 5 to 10% return on who actually will invest in what I've got, right? So out of 100 people, only five people might buy a tutorial. Does this make sense to you guys? And it's not like 100 out of the 100 will buy a tutorial. And so like within that margin, and I'm like, tell, you're telling me like, um, what you call it? Like these same people, like that small group's gonna wanna buy like a book, you know, from some random person I just shared their stuff. Like it's just not gonna happen. And sure enough, I did. I was like, well, I'll do it because I was his friend and I wanted to prove to him that I have some sense to this, you know? And uh, sure enough, he got like nothing, you know? And he was just like, wow, that's crazy. I was like, so those numbers only matter uh, depending on the context. I was like, yeah, you got to be very careful to think that large numbers means large sales and conversions. Uh, and I remember when uh, John Park decided to kind of do gum roads and stuff. And we talked a lot and he was like, you know, I want to like start a school and do all this stuff. I was like, build an audience around education because you don't have that. Like he's a great educator. I was like, but you don't have that yet. And then you can start your school, no problem. So he did that. He started a brainstorm Facebook group. It like blew up. He did, he was there pretty frequently, did lots of great challenges. And then he started his school advertised on his own Facebook group that he created. People signed up like fucking hotcakes, right? And now it's a very successful thriving school, you know? So you gotta build that audience. That's like a thing you hear a lot because it's fucking true, <laughs> okay? It's not like a, it's not like some sort of weird business school marketing taboo lingo stuff, like building an audience is incredibly merit-based, okay? And it's really important to know who you're building. Don't just get the large number, okay? Large number is great, but it doesn't mean you get large conversions, okay? It's better to have like 10,000 people who are loyal followers of yours than 1 million just randos. Believe me on that. Huh? <laughs> no, trust me, man. Like, I make a really great income. Like, look at, look, look at the class alone, right? Um, back when I sold the class for like $500 a pop, right? If I get 10 students to sign up for my class, that's $5,000, right? Uh, like net revenue. You hear what I'm saying? And so if I have 10,000 people that follow me and only 10 of those people sign up for my class, then I've made five grand, you know? And it's much easier to get that, those 10 people out of a thousand people who are loyal fans and supporters of what I do, right? All I gotta do is provide the quality and then uh, people will keep coming, you know? That's why I never changed the model. Like this one, I. Uh, platform does what it does and it works because i'm pretty much who i am off and online right if you meet me in real life like this is who i am if you meet me online this is who i am the only difference is that you guys are paying for my time and i provide it you know um, just to add on when will you be bringing back your advertisements for your t-shirts and your uh first book the heaven hill thing <laughs> that's what i'm saying like I'm learning who my audience is, and I think education is where I just want to be. The next thing that I want to build is really just uh, games and stuff that can supply education again, right? I want more things to get be good at. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't necessarily want to sell stuff, but that's what I want to do. You you can have a different strategy, and if you wanted to sell stuff, then you need to build an audience around people who want to buy your stuff yeah but is there any, is, um did you get your um info mostly just from talking to people or well like i said it was more it's also retrospective like i was looking back at what was working because when i pivoted and tried different stuff like you mentioned t-shirts people don't follow me for t-shirts you know what i mean so t-shirts never really sold <laughs> you know what i'm getting at the art book did. Art book did really well. But art books are fucking hard. It was a nightmare. You know? 
So I decided I don't want to do that. And anybody, all the, there's very few people who just, that's all they focus on is like distributing and making art books. And that's, they make good money. I uh, did really bad. And it was very, very, very traumatic experience for me. And I don't want to go through that ever again. You know what I mean? But that was me personally. I am not a good person to talk to when it comes to that stuff. Um, but when it comes to like building a uh, business, especially around education, uh, I am absolutely a good person to talk to about it because I'm very successful at it. You know, but it goes back to my advice when I usually give to you guys, like don't think you're good at something or all of these other things, if, even if it's, it seems adjacent or parallel, right? Like just because I have, let's say, a successful business around education doesn't mean that I am successful business person at x y and z other things right everything is its own difference uh has its own challenges and has its own differences that's all i'm getting at but one thing is true for all like at least what i can tell you from like when you ask beginner business advice marketing and building your audience regardless of whatever that business is around is a thing okay like just obviously if you didn't take it if you didn't take it seriously before like you absolutely have to take it seriously you know and i would highly recommend to avoid paid advertisements just build your audience organically okay i think paid advertisements only works when you have a product that is more general right we have more niche niche uh like i have more niche niche product Versus like, I don't know, like Dollar Shave Club. You know what I mean? Just for the holidays. <laughs> yeah, like I'm like specifically marketing to people who are concept art or illustrator based people. You know, people who want to make art their profession, right? And that's not a large amount of people. So me trying to like, just be like, yeah, I just want to buy as many people's eyes as possible. is not uh, a great strategy. A better strategy is just to go to places where artists are at and just post there. They'll just come naturally. You know, post on art station, people will find me. Post on DeviantArt, people will find me. Instagram's a great place too, right? A lot of artists live and die on Instagram as well. But that's my my advice to you. I'm gonna go to bed though. I'm getting real tired. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. Hope you guys have a great night. I'll keep you guys updated with any baby news. But till then, I gotta go. I'm falling asleep as we're talking. <laughs> it is late. Cheers, friends. All right, appreciate y'all. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night, everyone. See you guys. Thank you. See you. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.